What's up, folks? How's it going? Thanks for being here. Happy July 4th. July mofo and 4th. Hope you guys are having a good July 4th. Hope you're being patriotic, whatever the hell that means. I, I consider patriotism saying we should not be causing nuclear Armageddon. Because you, because you know who dies in nuclear Armageddon? Fucking Americans also die. So I love how you're right. Like nowadays you're called anti-patriotic, anti-American, unpatriotic. If you say, hey, what if we don't push everything closer towards a fucking nuclear war with Russia? You see, I'd like for Americans to live and you seem to be cheering for a lot of death. So wouldn't that be cool if we like survived for a few more years and they're like, that's un American. You aren't supporting America by trying to create nuclear Armageddon, which is the American thing to do. Kill ourselves, fucking nuclear fallout. Amen. God bless our country. Tis of thee. Uh, so anyway, happy July 4th. Happy toxic nationalism, everybody. It's pushing us towards a, a, a death of our, our, our society and our people and everything else. But uh, happy toxic nationalism. Uh, I do consider myself a, a, a proud a uh, uh, supporter of the United States in that I want to see the United States and people live another few years. So I'm anti-war and anti-imperialism. So I think I'm one of the most patriotic people out there. I think that's how that works. Thanks for being here, folks. Uh, we're going to get into the cops. have done it again. They've turned another dude into fucking target practice anyway we're gonna get into that in a second please click uh click like click subscribe all that good stuff at rumble.com slash lee camp and everywhere else but uh i have a bunch of stories to get into also gonna get into a little something about the fermi paradox one of my favorite is there is there intelligent life out there because we clearly aren't it so it does it exist somewhere <laughs> so that we can learn from it anyway Gonna, gonna get into that, and I know that doesn't sound like breaking news, but you just wait. You just wait. Anyway, uh, but yes, uh, this is uh, huge news. Uh, Akron, Ohio. Uh, here's New York Times. Videos. Oh, hold on. Let me get that stupid background out of the way. Videos of Jalen Walker shooting by police raise more questions. Okay, first of all, uh, and, 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 I it it's a little weird they named him Jay Walker. All right, who names who names their kid Jay Walker? I don't it, like you. It, 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 I feel like you name someone after a crime and they're gonna have a weird life. That's all I'm saying. I mean, this is the cops' fault. Uh, we'll get into that in a second. But I'm still. I feel like you know, like you name your kid breaking and entering. They end up having a strange life. That's usually how it works. But. Anyway, jaywalking shouldn't even be a crime. So I, I don't know what I'm talking about. Really, my theory breaks down at that point. So, all right, videos of the, but but just look at this headline. This is classic New York Times fucking bullshit propaganda manipulation. Just giving you the, 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 some angle on the story where it's like, yes, that's a true story, but the way you're phrasing it, the words you're using, uh, like. Videos of Jalen Walker shooting by police raise more questions. You know another way to phrase that he headline? Video shows cops fucking murdering a dude with 60 shots into his body. Riddling his body with bullets. Fucking murdering the shit out of the guy. Murdering him roughly 60 times over. That could have been the headline. That's what New York Times could have gone with. Instead, they said, the video raises some questions. We asked you where there's some, some people are asking some stuff about the video that shows these cops obliterating a dude. I mean, how? what sacks of shit work at the New York Times? How does anybody, how does 
anybody fucking write that headline after seeing a video of a guy get shot 60 times. I think they fired like 80 or 90 bullets. Hit him 60 times. And how do you and go and raise some questions? Uh, like, uh, how many times could they murder him is one of the questions. Uh, uh, how, how many bullets could they even have? Uh, fuck you and your raising questions. Hannibal Lecter, the collection of skeletons in Hannibal Lecter's closet raises some questions. The, the, the blood sprayed across the walls raises some interesting conundrums. Fuck you all. A 25-year-old black man who was killed last week by police officers in Akron, Ohio, suffered more than 60 gunshot wounds but was unarmed at the time, the police chief said Sunday. Unarmed. And by the way, just because someone's armed does not mean you have a right to shoot them 60 times either. Uh, now that fucking half of Americans are armed. Uh, ask any one of these b b b fucking, I love that I can still carry everywhere I go. Ask any one of those clowns whether it's okay to shoot anybody who happens to be armed. You know, I, I, I like to have my gun everywhere I go. I go to the store, I got to be ready. I go to get beef jerky, got to have my gun with me just in case. Just in case some shit goes down. Ask those guys if it's okay for them to be shot 60 times because they're armed. But anyway, Chief says he was unarmed. That detail was among the facts that began to emerge. Oh, and by the way, uh, I forgot to mention, uh, the, 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 the opening line, they're still kind of using the passive voice. Who was killed? They don't use the word murdered. Who was killed by police officers? How about, let's rephrase the sentence into Akron police murder the shit out of a dude who was unarmed. Let's, let's rephrase it like that. Anyway, that detail was among the facts that began to emerge in the killing of the man Jalen Walker, who died last Monday after fleeing the police during what was supposed to be a routine traffic stop. Are you all starting to see a pattern here? This shit, most of it starts with routine traffic stop. It's a routine stop. Why do we have routine stops? Why does this exist in the United States? We're going to pull people over and we're going to have fucking three guys with guns surround them because they got a screw loose on the fucking license plate. Why is that acceptable? Why is that an okay thing to say your society does? If you don't, and you look at any other country, this shit doesn't go on. This level of killing does not uh, exist anywhere. L a killing by police. Okay? The United States police kill over 1,000 people a year. Sometimes it's 11, 1,200 a year. In the United States, they kill more people in the first week of the year than in Britain. They kill all year, usually. In other countries, you know, like Germany will average like seven killings by police a year. And, 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 and other smaller countries, Denmark and Switzerland, they average often have zero or one. They go the whole year without killing innocent people. It's crazy. How do they do it? I thought it was impossible. Because you talk to anybody who defends this shit, who's like, oh, the, the, the cops, uh, they just, just got to kill some people. How is it? In other countries, they're somehow able to not do that. How is it in other countries they're somehow able to let humans live? Who knows? Who knows what it is that could go on? I don't know. I will have to we'll have to sit down and really crack the code on this one. Maybe they don't send fucking roided up assholes with guns into people's lives every eight seconds because they had a blinker out. Or the one I, I mentioned the other day on this uh, on the live stream was because uh, the, the guy hadn't he had signaled to change lanes, but not a hundred feet before changing lanes. It was less than a hundred feet when he put on his blinkety do. So they pulled him over and ended up stealing one hundred fifty thousand dollars of his and not charging him with anything. 
This is what cops are. This is not. This is not a. This is not. A, this is not the exception. This is the fucking reality. Most of what cops do is stand around all day and thrust their pit li- th- thrust their fucking faces into people's lives, and try and come up with a reason to arrest them or to hassle them or to tell them to move along. Right? It's a fascist move along brigade. Come move, move, move it along. And so that's most of what they do. Then there's a small percentage of the time that they run around shooting people and killing people or, or, or arresting people for some actual larger crime that's not some tiny nothingness. And here's the thing. We could have a police department where all they do is that those larger crimes, all they do is like, try and catch a murderer or some shit instead of having dudes with guns who spend all of their time training to shoot people uh they, they, just constantly interrupting people's lives just, yeah you were going too fast you were three miles over the you didn't have a full stop at the stop sign is this freedom does that sound like freedom to you or is it completely fucked up to have fascist armed brigades running around, most of them white, running around just fucking with people's lives and then occasionally doing something like this where they just fucking uh, 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 go, okay, corral on a, on a dude who's, who's trying to leave, who's trying to flee. And I know people love to go... The the bootlickers love to go, well, he shouldn't have been fleeing the cops. Okay, maybe, but you can't execute somebody who does something you don't like. That's not how it works. That's not a fucking good system. Well, he he, well, he called us a bad name, so we executed him. He, uh, He turned around and faced the other direction when I told him to face this direction, so we executed him. He had a screw loose on his uh, license plate, so we executed him. His name was Jay Walker, so we executed him. It's just insanity. Uh, oh, yeah, here's another classic passive voice bullshit New York Times garbage. Jay Wa- Jalen Walker, who died last Monday, who died last Monday? Who died last Monday? How about was fucking (laughs) riddled with bullets by maniac cops who thought they were in one of the Terminator movies? How about that? Who died last Monday? Who passed away after living a long and productive 25 years? Who who has faded into non-life Fuck you, New York Times. At the news conference on Sunday, the police released body camera videos of the pursuit. I'm surprised they said that. I'm surprised the cops didn't say, we would like to apologize that we forgot to turn off the videos. We meant to turn off our body cam videos. Unfortunately, we 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 left them on. And we would like to apologize that you have to watch this because we accidentally left these things on. News conference on Sunday, the police released body cam videos of the pursuit and shooting that showed officers' actions, but deepened many questions around his death. Oh, New York Times. God, you got to love them. You got to love them. Deepened many questions around his death. Yeah, questions such as why did these motherfuckers murder him 60 times? That's the question. Mr. Walker had one traffic ticket and no criminal record. And by the way, that, you know, the lovely fact to include, this is not a hardened criminal, as they say. Lovely fact to include. But guess what? Even if he had been, even if he had a fucking criminal record, you still don't get to execute him. What, what if three years earlier he had fucking robbed the shit out of a drugstore and then got caught for that and he spent two years in jail what, what what if all that were true? Still wouldn't change a goddamn thing. Wouldn't it doesn't matter if he had a criminal record. You cannot fucking shoot someone, execute someone 60 times as they flee 
because you're a pathetic human piece of shit. You just can't do it. It doesn't matter. They love to throw that in there. Either either doesn't have a criminal record and people go, oh, he didn't have a criminal record. Or did have a criminal record and then some people go, oh, well, I had a criminal record. Shouldn't matter. Shouldn't matter. You can't execute someone. The police said they initially sought to pull him over for an equipment violation and a traffic violation. Yeah, we 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 were we were pulling up on him too because we thought his tire was seemed a bit underinflated, just lightly underinflated. So we were gonna we were gonna pull up on him on for that with our guns drawn, you know. So we just like to be safe that we might have to murder the person because his tire is a little bit low, and uh, and then he tried to leave the scene, so we shot him sixty times. Seemed to solve the problem. He didn't. I, I would like to point out the uh, problem was solved. He did not continue to leave the scene, uh, as 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 you see. So really, really, we solved the issue, and uh, uh, some people don't like ha- how we solved it. That's all this is. I would like to point out that we have a, a great record in solving this issue. Uh, he did not flee the scene. I, you give. And th- and this th- you, you've seen this happen many times where cops someone is running from them, who knows why? Could be that he uh, that he got it could be something truly innocent like he got scared of the shit that these cops were were after him and so he ran for it uh, just because he's he fucking short circuited you know people aren't twenty five year old no criminal record maybe maybe he was like holy shit and he did and he did the wrong thing he ran from the cops you can't kill him sorry guys. Sorry, it's not how it fucking works. But even if it were the reverse, even if it were that he uh, was a a big-time drug dealer and he decided to run, you still can't execute him. That's not your choice to make. Eh, sure. Just shot the shit out of this guy because he was leaving. And you'll see cops do this. You see this increasingly. And sometimes they try and pretend that Oh no, he was coming at us and they, you know, flip over the body or whatever, try and make people not realize that they shot him in the back. But cops, many of them, think that the the goal is to just win the situation. And if a guy's fleeing you and you can't keep up with him, just shoot him. Many of them think that. And many of them, let's be honest, cops are not fucking geniuses. So a lot of them just think. I don't I don't like that this I don't like this situation, so I'm firing my gun. I'm scared of him, so I'm firing my gun. I haven't spent a lot of time around black people and I'm a scared little white guy, and so I'm firing my gun. All that shit goes on. I'm not saying I know any of that shit happened here, but all that shit goes on a lot. A lot of cops also are like fucking 22 years old. They're goddamn children too. This is children shooting children. Sorry, I'm 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 an old man. Uh, hundreds of protesters marched in downtown Akron, demanding justice for Mr. Walker and decrying police violence. Police t- during the news conference said that a handgun was later found in Mo- Mr. Walker's car, uh, and that a bullet casing was found nearby. But it, it, it but. And that it was consistent with the weapon, but that doesn't necessarily mean anything. Also, uh, a photo released by the police showed a handgun on the seat, but they also found out that there were no bullets in the handgun. So whatever shell casing they found nearby was either a lie by the cops or it was almost definitely uh, 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 one of their shell casings or some shit like that. I don't know, but cops lie all the time. So you can't even believe anything. Who knows if this is even this guy's gun? They, they, They fucking lie all the time. I mean, go watch about the report that, of what came down in Baltimore. That, that's what cops do. They lie to protect each other. That is, that is part of their job. They do it all the time. They lie to win a case or win a, you know, get a prosecution or whatever. They lie. That's their job. That's their job. They know. They know. Um, but even if it were true that, that he had a gun and it was found in the car, still can't shoot him 60 times. Actually, they fired at him, whatever, 80 times, hit him 60 times. It's fucking insanity.
So then they're saying that it seems that what's likely is the real reason that they shot him so many times is because he was wearing, when he decided to run and he, and he ran from the car, he had on the video shows he had on a ski mask. So he put on a ski mask and started running from the car. Now, who knows why that is? Uh, I, I imagine that it might have been that he uh, thought he would get away with fleeing, but obviously knew they have videos and they have facial recognition and shit like that. So if he fleed on video without a mask on, they would catch him. So this guy apparently thought, well, I'll throw on a ski mask and I'll run for it. Um, still, you know, yeah, might be a dumb move. Still can't shoot him 60 times, motherfuckers. That's not how it works. Well, we executed this guy because he had on a ski mask. Maybe he likes skiing, you know? Maybe he just came from a resort, a ski resort. <laughs> but as I've covered before on, on, you know, Redacted Tonight and everything, cops spend countless hours in training. Uh, well, actually, many of them are trained very little, but I mean of their training, of their little training, uh, a lot of it, a higher percentage, is how to fire their guns and hit a target. Very little of their training, a far lower percentage, is how to de-escalate a situation. So basically, they learn how to shoot things. They do not learn how not to shoot things. Which, honestly, if you're going to give assholes guns and say, go out into society and, 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 and just uh, harass whoever you want, step one should be like, here's how not to fire your gun. Here's all the ways not to fire your gun. You know, it kind of reminds me of like, uh, uh, you know, there's been a lot of criticism at college campuses. They'll take the, the freshman girls into a, a, a you know, a orientation thing and they'll give them a, a lecture and advice on how to avoid rape, on how to avoid being raped at college. And many people pointed out that, there was not enough education to the boys and the men uh, on how not to rape. <laughs> like, you can't just pull the women aside and say, here's how to avoid rape. You should also pull the men aside and say, here's how not to rape people. So it's the same with the cops. You don't just teach them how to shoot things. Teach them how not to shoot things. Teach them how not to kill people. And then, of course, the... Uh, uh, these officers have been, you know, pulled off duty, but they're not immediately fired. Oh, I also covered the, uh, the percentage, no matter what the situation is, no matter how fucking crazy the situation is, shooting a guy 60 times, you know, other situ other, other moments where they killed a kid, a child, Tamir Rice, you know, they kill an eight year old or something. They shoot him 10 times, no matter how insane the situation is, <coughs> the odds of a police officer getting prosecuted for murder, successfully winning that prosecution and actually having them serve time in prison for murder is something like 0.01% or something. It's, it is the, I don't remember the exact number, but it is the tiniest minuscule. It was something like over 20 years 15 cops had been prosecuted successfully and like three or five had ended up serving time for murder. Like it is the tiniest percentage that a cop will actually be prosecuted for murder. So it gives them the, the right to just fucking shoot at will. It's insanity. And just a little reminder here, other countries don't have this problem. So whatever explanation, there's probably somebody in the comment thread right now going, well, they got to learn how to, like Fox News loves to be like, well, but you know what it is? Black people need to learn how to be arrested better, okay? They don't seem to have figured out how to put their hands up appropriately. <laughs> they need to learn how to be arrested easier by our white police officers. Anybody saying that shit, just remind them, this doesn't happen in other countries. And guess what? There are black people in other countries. I know, mind-blowing. There are non-white people in other countries. There are Hispanic people in other countries. There are Asian people in other countries. And yet, 
This shit doesn't go down in other countries. There are not endless barrages of bullets coming from cops into fleeing human beings. Uh, and by the way, mentioning, I thought I'd pull up this article from uh, this from the year 2000 about uh, how cops are not always the, the brightest, not always the sharpest tool in the shed. This is uh, a court case in which a federal court said it was okay to bar high IQ cops from being on the force. It's okay to stop intelligent cops from joining a police force. And this, this court case came from a guy who was given a, a, an IQ test for, uh, as part of his application to be on the police force. And then they rejected him and they must have told him, I guess how he fi- found out, they must have told him that his IQ was too high to be on the police force. And you may, some of you may be, I mean, I don't know why the fuck the court would okay that to begin with, but some of you may be going, well, why would the police force forces around the country not want smart cops? And the reason is because they think it's a job that requires dumber people. I mean, they they think it's a job that requires, like, they think if you're smart, if you're pretty intelligent, then you're not going to keep doing that job. So they're trying to keep people on the force who are not highly intelligent because they think it's easier. They think that they, they won't waste their time training them and everything and then have them go, oh, this job fucking sucks and it's and it's oppressive and it harms the community. So they want more dummies. Uh, also, and there's, there was no court case around it, but also, uh, Lieutenant Ray Lewis, who I've had on before on, on the show before, uh, he pointed out that many police departments also have empathy tests where they don't want cops too empathetic, meaning you relate to other people's pain. You feel other people, they give them tests to make sure they can't feel other people's pain very well. Because again, you won't stay on a police force if you find if if if, if you're like if you're like ah, I don't like hurting other people because you know you you hurt them and then it looks like that hurts them you know like you bash your guy's head in and then he seems kind of like annoyed perturbed and I don't like that when he when he looks at me and he's upset and I just beat his head in I don't I don't really like that and they're like oh well then you're not gonna last on the police force <laughs> you're not gonna last around here no no. You got to not feel, uh, you 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 got to not feel it inside yourself when you uh, beat the shit out of someone who's innocent or uh, you know or or guilty of something, but it's not anything real. You know, it's like he had a joint in his pocket. Who who doesn't need to take the edge off at the end of the day? So the guy's a joint in the pocket. You beat the living shit out of him because he called you because he called you a fuck face as you. Took the, as you as you you know grabbed him and ripped the joint out of his pocket and instead you're arresting him then he calls you a fuck face and you beat the living shit out of him and uh, you, you gotta you gotta enjoy that and we're worried that if you have a lot of empathy you won't really enjoy it you'll you'll you know you won't you won't get the most out of it you won't you won't consider it like a good time and if you don't consider it a good time you don't hang around long then we've wasted our money you know training you and shit like that so. So legit, they're looking for low IQ, low empathy human beings. And that's what we have here in the United States. And maybe that's why we have over a thousand police um, murders by police every year. Um, I'm going to go on to the next story here in a minute, but please take a second to... Uh, to hit subscribe, hit the like button, all that good stuff. This is also a podcast. If you if you prefer to like listen to the to the audio thing in the ear holes, uh, then check out the Moment of Clarity podcast. It's been banned by Spotify because I am the most censored comedian in America. However, it is available on the Stitcher app and I think on other apps as well. But uh, Stitcher is free, and you can grab that one. Just download Stitcher and listen to Moment of Clarity. Um, what else? Uh, oh yeah, I'm, uh, before I get to the next story, I, I just just to let you know, I'm I'm now live Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 
and Saturday at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. Obviously, it reruns afterwards, so you can go watch it anytime. But uh, I'm live all those days. Uh, Fridays is for members only at LeeCampNot.net, but all the others are open to everyone. Uh, Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, free for everyone at noon, uh, noon Eastern. But yeah, happy July 4th. And I, 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 I am going to be covering something on the, on the Government Secrets podcast I do, uh, which is that, and I'll give you a little teaser here because it's July 4th. The guy, the, the the story about the guy who came up with the 50 star flag as opposed to the other flags, because I know this is going to, again, blow your mind. Sh- shocking knowledge I'm about to drop right here. But we haven't always had a 50 star flag. You know, it, it, it was it was it was as recent as the uh, what, eight, uh, 1950s that we added that we stole Hawaii and Alaska. So, <laughs> Uh, you know, we, we stole Alaska before that, but we hadn't really added it as a state, you know? So we were like, ah, why not add it? So 1950s, uh, I think late 50s, early 60s. Uh, yeah, 59 maybe. We, we we add the 50th state. And so someone had to come up with a new pattern for the Starsies. Where did the Starsies go on our flag? And there's the story, and like I still think to this day, if you maybe look it up on Wikipedia, maybe it's still on there, but um, there, there's this guy who they said he came up with it in, uh, you know, in, in somewhere, somewhere Pennsylvania or something. And he, ca- he came up with it when he was a kid. He was just a kid and he came up with the 50 star pattern. And he lived the rest of his life touring and talking about that and and giving speeches about coming up with the flag and meeting president eisenhower and all this stuff and it turns out none of it's true or or, or a little fraction of it is true uh almost all of it is fake <laughs> which is amazing considering you know again like every american origin story you know everyone you get into when you dig down into it like like the missing verse from the Star Spangled Banner that's about killing all the slaves that turned against us. And, you know, all, all this shit, every origin story you look into is just like some level of lies. And I feel like eh, it's kind of it's representative of the, uh, the American dream because the American dream is alive. It's George, Car- I mean, it's a lie. As, a, as, as George Carlin said, you got to be asleep to believe it. And so, yeah, you know, it fits with the American dream being a lie that uh, this guy who invented, who came up with the 50 star flag, didn't actually do it. (laughs) But I'll get into, I I plan on covering that on Government Secrets Podcast this week. But let's get to another story. Uh, And soon the rest of this uh, live stream will be only at rumble.com slash Lee Camp. Rumble.com slash Lee Camp. Uh, I'll put it in the uh, comment thread, but we'll do one more story before the other ones cut off and it's free to go watch at rumble.com slash Lee camp, uh, as well. But anyway, let's do one more story, which is actually a hopeful one. And I've been covering this and I'm going to keep covering it. There is a wave of fucking unionizing a wave of workers standing up, fighting back, giving the bosses the one, two, and it's, it's beautiful. It's like, for me, this this is far there's far more hope in this in 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 workers standing up fighting back. I see far more hope in that than I see in uh, well this Democrat means it this time. This one's a real progressive. He's not an asshole like all the others. This one no, but this one. This one, I know they've lost. I know, I know the other 9,999 Democrats that we've said this about have been uh, liars, fakes, frauds, and fucking scam artists. Some of them were good people when they first got in, but then they were captured by the corporate beast. Actually, I'm going to get into that in a minute, maybe. But, uh, uh, but this one, this one's a good guy. This one I'm down with. So I don't, I, I'm done seeing hope in that. Uh, so what I'm seeing hope in is fucking workers standing up and showing that there's a new sense of possibility. Starbucks and Amazon wins have inspired organizing at Trader Joe's, REI, Target, Apple. I, I know there's another one about Chipotle, uh, other coffee shops. It, it is it is fucking rippling across the country. 
And all of you out there, whatever jobs you have, uh, start thinking about this as a possibility. Start thinking about this. If you're not a, a, a self-employed like myself, and you, you know, because going on strike against yourself is, it's kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy. It's a, it's a, it's a bit of a, a bit of a circle jerk. If you, if you go on and the circle is very small, if you go, if you go on, you know, that's where, they, that's, that, let, that, let that be a lesson to those of you out there. If, if you want to not feel lonely when you're jacking it, uh, just picture it as a, a solo circle jerk, <laughs> a, a one person <laughs> circle jerk. Then you feel like you have company. Anyway, that was a slight tangent. But this is rippling across the country. And I, I will say that, yeah, I don't, I don't love some of these stores. I'm not like, you can support the unionizing of these workers without being like, I love Target. Okay. Target is, you know, I, sometimes I had to, to have to shop there. If it's, if there's really, I can't find anything anywhere else. But it's like, you know, it's, it, they're selling just, child labor shit and, and low, low prices. It's funny how low the prices can go when you get children to build the shit and make the stuff. It's funny. It's funny how low the prices will go. But Target, I don't know what it is about Target or maybe it's any of those big, you know, I'm sure it's the same with Walmart and everything, but something about it just makes my, just walking in there makes my skin crawl. Just like the, ah, just a moment. And I don't, I don't blame the employees, you know, even though they're pushing all the shit on, they're trying to, yeah, well, well, what about, the, what about, the, yeah, you get the warranty and the warranty on a pair of socks. I don't know if I need that, but I don't really blame the employees. I don't know. It's just the, the way the lighting is and the, the fucking signage and the, everything just seems uh, sad and manipulated. And I don't know, but anyway, that being said, uh, uh, there's, there's a wave across the country of unionizing. Uh, and here's a quote from uh, one of them, uh, a, a Starbucks employee. We want to not just open the door for the rest of the food service industry. We want to kick it down, motherfuckers. Eventually, you get tired of jumping to the next job and praying it's going to be better. You realize you should just take a stand where you have some good ground. Uh, yeah, because it's not going to be better anywhere else. Because this is this is what unfettered capitalism, late stage capitalism looks like. Every job fucking sucks. They're exploiting you at every turn. That's what it is. So you got to take a stand, you, you know. You can't just keep getting pushed back and pushed back and pushed back. The union wave of Starbucks and the Amazon Labor Union, ALU, victory on Staten Island, have sparked a new sense of possibility among workers at some of the country's biggest non-union employers, where unions have struggled for decades to establish any sort of foothold. Foothold. A foothold is a different thing. That's, you know, you got you to find a special kind of part, partner to, to get involved in with, footholds with you. Since their April win, ALU organizers say they've heard from workers at another 100 Amazon facility, 100 Amazon facilities across the country who want to unionize. Oh, Jeff Bezos has got to be just punching himself in the balls right now. And in recent months, just to take some of the pain away, he's like, if I punch myself in the balls, I don't feel it as much. And in recent months, Workers have filed for union elections at Trader Joe's stores in Massachusetts, Minneapolis, REI in Manhattan, a Target in Virginia, and Apple stores in Atlanta and Taos in Maryland. Boom, boom, boom. It's just across the country. And like workers have been exploited for so long in the United States that it's like, this is way overdue, way overdue. The organizing wave is turning the labor movement's prevailing wisdom on its head. Until now, unions have mostly avoided filing for election at single workplaces that are part of big chains, like fast food restaurants at Amazon warehouses uh, or Amazon warehouses, not seeing a viable route to a first contract. Uh, yeah, I think the real reason is that the larger unions are mostly captured by the oligarchy. They're mostly indebted or, you know, bending over. Just, just treat us right, Democrats, please. 
please, guys. And so they do whatever the fuck they want. And so not allowing people to actually protest and to actually fight for a union is part of the, it's part of the scam. It's part of how it works. So now you have all these wildcat union efforts where they don't wait to see what, you know, AFL CIO or whoever the fuck says, they just fucking do it. But with the worker organizers behind the current upsurge have relied on grassroots organizing to produce a a cascading effect. The most beautiful thing about this whole movement is that we only have to win one to show what's possible, says Casey Moore, a barista at Starbucks in Buffalo. Buffalo, New York. And that's the thing, this shit, it inspires. It inspires That's what's beautiful about it. You do it at one location. And then what do you think every Starbucks employee across all of Buffalo is going to think if you get one unionized? What do you think their response is going to be? Oh, maybe it could be me. Maybe it could be us, right? And if you're, you know, if you're out there and you work somewhere that, that, that could have a union that doesn't, and I know it's dangerous, so I don't, I don't, uh, I, I'm not like, why the fuck aren't you doing it? I, I get that it's, you, you might think like, oh God, I, I could risk my job. But, you know, there's ways to start quietly, you know, maybe phrase it, when you start talking to people, phrase it in a way where they, you could argue you're not really trying to, I wouldn't try to create a union, I don't know what you're talking about. You know, you could do, you play it off, right? Like you just kind of sidle up to another worker and you go, wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be interesting if the bosses had to get our approval before they screwed us? Wouldn't that be, wouldn't that be fascinating? You know, or just, just wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be odd if we had paid time off? Wouldn't that be just like a totally, totally odd thing to happen? You know, if, even if you're like, well, my wife hates me, so it means I she'd get to hate me in person. That'd be exciting, right? Get all that extra time to be hated face to face. I know there's, there's, you know, there's some caveats. I'm not saying it's a perfect plan, but, but I'm saying you could say you could start spreading it out in the workplace without actually saying we need a union because I know that can be kind of dangerous. So you you can start start easy, start start you know keep it on the keep it on the DL, right? Just 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 you know pass a note to someone saying, wouldn't it be weird? If we weren't sexually harassed, wouldn't that be crazy? That would be so weird. That'd be so weird. Wouldn't that, if that, if that boss of ours didn't slap, couldn't slap our ass anymore, wouldn't that be, wouldn't that be crazy? You know, or, or, or wouldn't it be wackadoo if our Walmarts didn't need to have a canned food drive for our own employees for Thanksgiving. That was a real thing that happened, by the way. Wouldn't that be bizarro world? If, they, if, if we didn't need that, if we were paid enough, if we were paid legitimately what we were worth, so we didn't need to have a canned food drive as employees to be able to eat on Thanksgiving, Literally, a Walmart, it, 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 they, they fucking put up a sign that said for employees that, you know, are, are struggling this holiday season. And, I'm, I'm, and and apparently other people were like, here's an idea. You could fucking pay them. That's, that's I was just throwing it out there. Just, just spitballing here. You could fucking pay them more. Anyway, long story short, I'm going to keep covering this story because it is, it is a, ma- it is a massive wave that's happening across the country. And again, this doesn't mean I support the, the fucking wage slave system. I, I I've said again and again, the wage slave system of life is fucked up, but that doesn't mean I don't want workers to be treated better. Like you're going to, you can be against, you can be against this shit and still want workers to be treated better. Cause this is right now. This is how the system works. And, and, you know, stop, stop waiting for the senior echelon of the unions to, to back you. Stop waiting for, for the, the fucking people getting paid, you know, six, seven figures a year to come in and say, I think you guys need a union because that's not why they're there. That's not what they're doing. 
They're not there to actually help the union. They're, they're there to, to make sure everything's easy for the Democrats so that they can keep getting a, a, a little bit of a reach around from the Democrats and they keep donating to the Democrats. It's all that shit. You know, but I mean, how much more can workers get exploited? You can't like what? what gas in some places is seven dollars a gallon. Can, can can people have to even afford to drive to the workplace or whatever the fuck? I know some people work from home now, and there's there, there's issues with that as well. But seven dollars a gallon. What's it cost to fill up a car now? And of course, we all should have been electric cars in fucking fifty years ago, but they killed that, didn't they? Every, all this shit has so many layers, you know? Like, you're like, seven dollars a gallon is so fucked up. Also, we should have had electric cars like 30 years ago, 40, 50 years ago, you know? But they, they fucking ruined that. Also, there should be great public transit, right? There should be public, there should be free public transit, right? Uh, the community's paying taxes. Why, why can't those go to a fucking free monorail or whatever the, whatever the latest technology is? It's probably not monorail, but whatever the fuck. Light rail, e-rail, electric rail, whatever, something. I don't care if it's a fucking rickshaw. Uh, people are paying taxes, just free rickshaws everywhere. And, and, and uh, you know, I, I don't know if I really want someone uh, to have to pull people, but if he's getting paid really well, you know, and they, and they cover the shoes he's going through, then sure, sure, why not? You know, it's just another, another wage slave job, uh, which is a system I'm against. But as long as we're going to have it, I want those workers to be treated right. Um, okay, so the rest of this live stream will be at rumble.com slash Lee Camp. That's rumble.com slash Lee Camp, L-E-C-A-M-P. Um, but it's free to watch there, so go watch there. I hope you'll join us over there. Um, it, it should be the top video right there uh, uh, right now. And uh, hit subscribe when you're over there. And uh, also, I am the most censored comedian in America. I've had my YouTube channel of 250,000 subscribers banned globally, over 1,000 videos banned globally. My podcast, Moment of Clarity, is banned from Spotify. You can still get it on Stitcher and others. Uh, but, yeah, shadow banned on Facebook. But I'm going to keep doing this as long as you guys support it. So if you want to support it, go to LeeCamp.net. That'll forward you to my Locals page. Locals is like Patreon, but it's much more interactive. Uh, I, I get to chat with you. And actually, this next story comes from uh, suggestions that I got at Locals, uh, LeeCamp.net. So that's what we're doing next. All right. One second while we cut off the other feeds.